Well, here we are. Another glorious day on Loch Erne. Guess what the weather is like? Yep, you guessed it. Pissing with rain. But it's not so bad. Today I am joined with a future angling superstar, Jake. Yes folks, today's mission is to catch young Jake a pike. Roll that intro. Cooking time. Disaster has struck. The ridge pa the ridge monkey. The ridge monkey has failed. It has died. The two little pins that hold it in when you when you open up the lid. Yeah, they pinged off. So my battle with the ridge monkey continues. This time it's fallen to bits, so Recommendations lads for something to replace the XL Ridge Monkey thing Because the only place it's going now is to the bin You got to ask what sort of quality controls good on at Ridge Monkey if the uh, If the metal pins, now metal pins shear off just by opening the handle Disappointing, very disappointing But I'm not going to let it spoil my bacon sandwich It's a bit windy. You just have to be careful on the on here. I can't feel my hand. I can't even put my glove on. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that cold. Right. Pig. They like the smell of the bait. It's like uh, when you walk past a. It's like when you walk past a a chip shop. <laughs> Better? Yeah. It's like when you walk past the chip shop and all you smell is that nice fish and chips and you think I'm going to have me some fish and chips So all this is doing is to make the bait smell a bit better for the pike So we're going to wind it in just This is the trout. So inside the trout, we're going to inject salmon oil. This is full of salmon oil. You got to be careful when you're doing this, because you don't want this into your hand. So just be careful with it. Just put a couple of holes like that there. And start to inject slowly. And you'll start to see it, see it starting to ooze out. There we go. And that is the salmon oil. Do you want to take a step back there before I cast this? And then we just put it out nice and easy. And that's us on the bottom.
Yep, that's what's on the bottom. Now we just set the boat, set the rod up again. So you let the bit runner go on, it'll take out the tension that's in the line, because the flat the line's made of monofilament, it'll stretch. You have a booger. So then we just take an offline out to go down to the wee clip, like so, so that your drop arms hang in there just nice and easy below the bit, below the reel. And then we, oh, so that's turned on. And we're going to do the same with this one. So we'll turn this off. This one is the, the big mackerel tail. So we're going to do the same with it, only we're going to inject it full of mackerel. You just pierce it a bunch of times like that there, that lets all the smell come out into the water. But again, be careful. You don't want to stick that into your hand. And I'll cast this one out again. And now we're on the bottom of that one. So again, setting the rods up nice and simple. Your rod goes in. push it down so it's locked down so it can't, if you get like a, a strong fish and it hits the bait, it could rip the rod in. This is why we use these little gripper things, so once the rod's in, the rod's not going to go anywhere. So that we don't want to lose the rods. No. You don't want to see your Uncle David cry. <laughs> Again, take up all the tension. About enough for it to be there. And back on, back on. Right, well, we'll see if you can cast now. So go on and go pick up your rod. see if you hold it so that your two fingers these two fingers are like that there so this hands hold it there so you want now where are you going All right. this way you want this hand here holding the rod here like this with these two fingers in there right now you've got control of the rod the rod's not going to go anywhere you don't need to hold it there and now you're going to close the bail arm and you're going to start to wind. So wind the reel. You want to lift the rod up a wee bit and just wind, 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 wind because you're bringing the bait in. Keep going. Here we are. Right, so stop. There we go. Now we're going to take a few steps up this way. We're going to walk up a little bit so we're casting out. About here is good. About here is good. I'm going to get on the other side of you so I don't get any piercings. And this is 
See if we've just wound it a wee bit too tight there, so hold it, hold, hold it up, a little bit, hold tight. Okay. Right, there we go. So, let me, I'll just show you how to cast. You have your rod like that there, so you're holding the rod one-handed. You have your pointing finger, that's what you're going to hold the line with. And you open the bell arm, and now that means that when you cast, the line can go forward. So, you do that then. No, 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 no. Put your line over it. Tap, tap the line with your finger. So the line's not going to spill out. You might want to take off your glove. That's okay. <laughs> no, I'm laughing because I'm in the hand seat, no, I can't even take off my glove. I would put that into your pets, put that down in front of yourself there so the wind doesn't take it and blow it away. Just stuff it in here. Just stuff it down in there, sure. That's not going to go anywhere. No. Right. Just take the rod, how I showed you. How I showed you, there you go. Right. Now you put the line into your finger. Have you got it? Yeah. Open the bell arm. Right. Now you can put you can cast it out so you Or we could go like that, but we want to go in the other direction, so let me just have a wee look at this one. Are we going this, this way? Yeah. So do you want me to show you again? Yeah. Right. Hold the rod. You've got your line holding on the finger. This finger's doing all the control. Take the bell arm off. See that the line can't go anywhere because you're holding it. And that's just the case of lifting it up and casting it forward. And there you go. And then you just hold the rod tip up to you feel it, that's it hitting the bottom. See the way the line's just all of a sudden went slack in the wind? Yeah. That means that your bait is now on the bottom. So now we have to put it into the rod rest. Right. So you put it in the rod rest, how I showed you. Are do we need to reel her in? No, 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 you need to go into the rod rest. We're setting it back into the rod rest. And then I'm going to get you another cup of tea to warm you up. Turn this off. It's not making a racket. Right. Okay. Set it back a bit. Just about there. That thing needs to be straight. Just about there. And then this wee boy over here, it's what this was the drop arm. So you just want to take out the slack of the line a little bit. So you put the bait runner on a wee bit, it takes the slack out. Then you open the bail arm and turn it on and now she's ready to go remember if the pike picks the bait up that's going to move up if the pike run, comes closer to you that's going to drop down but either way when that's making a noise the sounder box and the table will be making a noise so you'll know that something's happening yeah. so let's go back and make you another cup of tea before you freeze I think the next time we come, we'll bring the, uh, I've got shorter rods, they're only 10 foot, they're a bit lighter than those, they might be easier for you to cast, but get your other hand in that glove so your, your I finger, I think my hand is a careful reaction to go there, <laughs> this is what, heating up, Well, the other one should be warm as well, so take it out and just put them into your hands. Warm yourself up. 
better. Yeah. So we'll get you a lighter rod, a lighter setup. We'll get you casting. It's not the most ideal day, I know that, because it's <laughs> a bit windy. Hold on, man. Yeah. Try not to do that with these rods. Oh, I was waiting. I was like, fine. I will all the same try not to do it with, the, with those rods. <laughs> like I said, you don't want to see your Uncle David crying. But we'll give that lamprey another maybe half hour and then we'll put out something a wee bit special. I'm going to get you a roach, but I'm going to spray the roach with orange dye. So the roach is like fluorescent orange. So the pike will be sitting in the bottom and all of a sudden there'll be this fluorescent orange thing there and they'll be like, what's that? I'll just go over and check that out. Oh, that looks like a fish. Bam! This windy on this side of the lock. The first place I was actually thinking about taking you was a place called Ely Lodge. It's on the big lock, and if it's like this here, you you'd be a you could surf at Ely Lodge with the wind they got. So it's kind of a good. This this is kind of sheltered because you have the island in front of you. So the wind that's coming towards us has to hit that island and go over the island or around it. Drink this coffee and have a cigar, and then we'll sort you out with something special. Have a pike.
the hooks that are there. Just bring this up here to show you. There's a pike. Calm down, son. Calm down. See this one hooking mat we have here? This is called a cradle. We use this so that the pike can't hurt itself. It can't, it can't do any harm to itself. There you go. And when you were going to say like the pike still had the hooks in its mouth, you'd have to put you have to unhook it. So you turn it on its back, nice and gently, and you put your hand in there. And that's how you hold it. So that's how you hold it for the camera. And now we're going to put it. In. We're going to release it. And we're going to put it back. Or do you want to wait? See how much it is. Do you want to wait and see how heavy it is? We'll do that then. I'd say it's about ten pounds. That's that. Right, so now we have to get the line out. What we do is put this on the side and then we tie it off. There you go, Jake. 14 pound. That's how heavy it is. So we're going to go now and release it. Put it back. Unless you want to take photographs of it. You've seen a pike now, Jack. What do you think? Big. Big. You know they get a lot bigger than that. That there's there's pike that's been caught not that far from here that are thirty five pound. Oh. That's more than twice the size of that. I like the castle. Well. The next one we get, you're striking it, you're playing it. You may squeeze them pan warmer bags, make sure your fingers are working. <laughs> How many times have you caught? I've lost count. Lost count. <laughs> Lots of them. Lots of them. I've been fortunate enough to fish in places where I've got some very, very big pike, but I haven't had a 
the, the class of a big pike would be over 30 pounds. That's a really that's a fish of a lifetime. If you get fish that are from 20 pounds to 30 pounds, those are really really good fish. Everybody would be happy with them. You would uh, you'd happily take photographs of them. You know, it'd be something you'd have in a photograph album. Ah well, a twenty pound pike. Well, that was what was that? That was fourteen pound. Yeah. So that's another six pound heavier than that. There, it's not hard to imagine that fish there. If that fish was, because its belly was hollow when you when I was when I was lifting it up, the belly wasn't full, so it hasn't been feeding. So that pike, come you know February time when they're really really feeding, because they spawn and end of March. So the closer they get to spawn on the bigger they get. That little fish would, you know, I would have no doubt that little fish would be pushing maybe 20 pounds coming February time. You know, that's just the way the urn fish are. They'll, they'll be following the, the shoals of roach and the shoals of bream. So will you come out again? Yeah. Good. I'll get you some lighter rods next time. I have some 10 foot little boat rods that are probably a bit, bit more manageable for you to cast and hold. Why not that heavy then? Aye, uh, it's just probably a bit awkward for you because... They're a bit like, big but they're not Aye. Uh, well those rods are 12 foot, so they're 12 foot and 3.5 and pound test curve. They're designed to basically bully the fish. See if that, that pike <laughs> there, if that pike wanted to go left and you didn't want it to go left, those rods have enough power where you can tilt the rod and pull it away. So say you're bringing that fish in and all of a sudden it spies a big tree root or a big snag and it wants to go in there. With those rods, you're fit to drag it away and control it. The last thing you want when you're fishing for pike is too light. Because yeah. then the fish tells you what to do. You have no control. So a big pike would have, you know, it would just say fuck you and go straight into the snag <laughs> and then you've then you've lost it. Uh, might lost the rod, yeah. Well no you wouldn't lose the, the rod but you you're gonna the, the danger with pike fishing, say it snaps you off, you've left the trace with hooks in its mouth. Yeah. And that pike can't get rid of that trace with hooks. So that fish will you know starve to death unless it can get rid of it. There's been times here where I've caught pike where that that have the remains of other people's traces in their mouth. Because they've been using too short a trace, or they've been using line that's too light, yeah. so they've been broken off. So it's all about, you have to have the gear that's powerful enough to land the fish. You know, ultimately it's about the fish safety, you don't want to hurt them. No. But we'll definitely get you out again. Maybe on a better day, a bit less wind. Not that bad. Yeah. Bet you're glad I had them hand warmers in the van. Yeah. Do you know why I have them? Why? B. <laughs> no, it's better with wind than rain. Oh, aye. You don't want it last, man. Oh, God, no. Is it really not good for trout or fish, though? If it's raining, they'd come up. It doesn't make a difference. They're already wet, they're in the river. <laughs> they don't care if it's raining. But the type of fishing we're doing today is called ledgering, where you're putting your bait on the bottom. It's too windy to fish with a float. If you cast the float out, it'd be you know whipped away down there. You would be, you know, it wouldn't be any fun for you. So that's ledgering. If we get a decent day where it's not as windy, we'll show you how to fish with a float. Floats are great because you can put the bait out, and then you can watch the pike, or watch the float, and the float might start going like that there. Where the pikes hit it, and then it's nice. It's nice because you see the float just going away nice and slow. Then it just slides under. There's something nice about watching a pike take a float. But oh well, it's not a blank for caught pike.
Now let's get this one unhooked and then we'll get a weight for you. Right. See if mine can be heavy. Oh well we'll just have to see. Probably not. <laughs> right. So we have our hook on hooking pliers there. And we're just gonna get the We're going to get her all hooked here for you. Right. Right. So she's putting her in. Right. So there's the hooks. You can see the hooks, can't you? Yeah. So all you do now, you never ever put your fingers in there. Never, never, never. Because you'll end up with a pipe, the hook in your face, your hand. And if she wants to flop back, just let her flop back. And there you go, that's hooked. That's her unhooked. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to take her out of the, the net first. We'll take the net away, and we're going to go and wear for you. Because she's a nice fish, and then we'll see if we're getting you holding it. This time we'll bring the hunt hooking stuff, we'll bring the, the scales and everything up to here. So just let this one go into the containment sling. Uh, the big the big metal thing is the big the thing that scales are on. Right, so I put the hooking mat or the the waist sling into this into the cradle and then I'm gonna talk you through how you hold it. Okay? Alright. Okay. So if she flips, don't be don't be frightened. Just remember you just have to hold on tight. And she'll calm down, and if it gets too much, just put her back down and unhook her man. Nothing else can, nothing can happen. the gills. Those are the gills. Don't touch those and don't touch those because those are rakers. They'll get cut if you touch those. Right, just under here. Yep. Hand under there nice and gently. And there they got there. of you with her now. Put your, just calm it down, but just put your hand over, over it there, look at there. Right. 
can pull it back into the middle of this sling there. There you go, now trans pass it there at. Try to put your hand under it. That's it there. There you go. Now we will now we will release it. And I'm just gonna plop it over the side. Just move you back. Uh no, I'll I'll release it for you kid. If you fish your tress to a clip, you can undo your clip and get your rod away. That means your rod isn't in the way when you're trying to unhook it. If you're trying to take tresses on a fish, you a bit of a kid in the back seat, imagine it's something like that stuff in your hand. So, that is a, a fat little, that's, that is a fat little jack pig. We're just going to. Oh, she's she's belly is hollow as well. Good condition. No no issues with her. So I'm just going to put her back in. 
Oh. I have to say since starting the old uh, YouTube channel, things have been very, very positive, you know. I had a bit of a goal when I started it, you know, this time last year, to make a thousand subscribers in a year, and to make the thousand subscribers before Christmas. Well, it's now, you know, second weekend in December, and I've made the thousand subscribers. We're currently sitting on 1,200, I think, at this moment. So it's, it's, uh, it's been, it's been very, very positive, and I've enjoyed the YouTube experience. I've had, I set up, I deliberately set up a Facebook page so that, you know, if you're chatting to me on YouTube, it can be a bit limit, limited, so there was a Facebook page where people could go to and talk and, and the, you know, that's kind of grown as well. So I've kind of been blown away by how positive the whole experience has been, if I'm honest. You know, it's introduced me to new people, it's, you know, it's, I don't profess to be an expert by any stretch of the imagination, I'm just the guy that fishes. You know, so, you've had a couple of guys recently reach out to me and ask me, you know, specifically about rods and rails and, you know, what to get and shopping and stuff I got there. It's, so it's kind of a bit overwhelming at times. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a guy who reached out to me recently and he sent me some pictures of new rods and new rails. And, and I kind of have to say this is, you know, a guy called Dean, good guy, you know, he's got his own YouTube channel, I'll put a link in it down below. He's uh, got new rods and new rails, so if you're watching this, Dean, you know, I hope your new rods and rails are lucky for you and I hope you catch some pike. It's been, it's been one of these things like doing shout outs for people. I've, <laughs> I just it was just finding it weird doing stuff like this, but ah well. So here we are, going into the uh, the second year, or you know we will be going into the second year of this channel. And people are saying you know you have to have you know, goals and things like that there. So for a laugh, I reached out to another YouTuber, you know called N I Carper. I put his link in the the description below as well and his channel is you know similar sort of size to mine I think he's just shy of 2,000 subscribers and you know, so he's been going a bit longer than I have but we kind of came to a friendly arrangement that in the year of uh, 2020 the first person to put 5,000 subscribers on their channel from the first of January 2020. The first person to put the uh, the 5,000 not not reach the 5,000 mark, but put an extra 5,000 subscribers on wins a bottle of booze of the other person's choosing. So in the new year, you can expect to see me doing a lot more subscribe to my channel stuff because I don't like losing and I don't like having to spend money. And I don't like buying other people booze, so this will be a, a bit of a challenge. I think I'm probably probably overreaching to expect like to get an extra five thousand subscribers in a year. But you know, fortune favors the brave. Fortune favors the brave and pities the stupid. So come the first of January, that's the uh, the mission for 2020 is gain an extra 5k in the old subscribers and if Darren's watching this you're going down son you're going down like a cheap watch <laughs> oh well anyway today's mission has been successful I've rung young Jake out fishing and over there sitting quite happy Caught his first ever pike, a 15 pounder. They're not always that easy to catch. So far today we've had three fish, all about the doubles, you know, a 15, a 14, they didn't weigh the third one, I estimate it's about 10 pound. It just went the back. So it's been a pretty good day so far. The weather is uh, 
due to get really bad, around about five o'clock we're expecting a storm to come in. So I'm going to stay there about three, slow pack up about three and then be out of here for four. To I don't want to be on the ground of the lock if it's really bad, if it's a storm. It's just not, not any fun. We're expecting to get lots of rain and lots of high winds, so it's uh, it'll be safe if we bug out around about maybe four o'clock-ish. Get the Jake man back to Swampland. A few moments later. That's four fish. You're going to see a picture of it uh, right now. Yeah, so four fish. Some scrapper doubles up to 15 pound. It's been a good day. I think I'm going to reward myself with a beer or five. What about you, Jake? What do you think of the pig angling now? Since I caught one, I can finally go home and say I caught, I, I got a 15 pound trout and two fish. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Pike. Pike. Or pike even. Wow. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a bit of a difference in the two species. 15 pound pike's an ice pike. I think it's time to take a, a slow pack up and then a drive home because we're expecting a storm to kind of roll in around about five o'clock so I want to say thank you to everyone that's done the whole liking and subscribing thing if you've watched this video and you've enjoyed the video and all that sort of good stuff don't be scared, give it a share let your mates see it it helps the channel grow, this is what we want Anyway, until next time, tight lines.